Hello, I'm Atuba George, and hey, today's Friday. Praise God. Hey, I don't know how your week has been, but listen, it's going to end gloriously today. It's, I'm telling you, a miracle is going to happen today. So you can as well start celebrating. Why? Because I'm giving you the word of the Lord. Something good is coming your way today. Now, if you believe that, join me as we make the man say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, hmm, I told you, Logos means the word of God that comes to you expressing or telling you about God's character, his ability, and his personality. And I've been sharing with you the importance of understanding Logos because it gives you stability. It makes you conform to his image. And then it's, it's, it creates patience in you. Because it will build trust. Trust goes with patience. That you should know. So when God speaks to you, maybe you're praying, and then suddenly you begin to hear the word of the Lord come to you. And many times, for example, you're discouraged. And then you decide to pray, which is the best thing you should do. Anytime you feel discouragement, don't go look for who to complain to. Look for a place to pray. Also, anytime you feel so excited about anything, the best thing you can do for yourself is look for where to pray. Two times, Satan can attack you easily. Your moment of discouragement and your moment of excitement. Take note of that. So, you feel discouraged, so discouraged, looks like everything you have done failed. Look for where to pray. So I don't even know what to say. Very good. It's best you don't know what to say. So what should I do? Switch in tongues. Begin to pray in tongues. So you go to that place and you're being like, hey, my father, I don't know what's going on. But I need your wisdom right now. And you're praying like that and praying like that. And suddenly, the word of God begins to come to your spirit. The word of God begins to come to your spirit. Now, sometimes I tell people, I say, Look, listen, there are times it's important, it's good you listen to tapes by other preachers, it's good you listen to messages, it's good you read books, but it gets to the point in your life you drop everything, everything external around you, drop it. No message, no music, just leave it. And and you stand before the Lord and say, Lord, if, if you're going to speak to me, then you've got to speak to me. I'll tell you the truth, that's when you begin to notice real progress in your life. And sometimes people say, what if, what if it's a demon that is speaking to me? How can you ask God to speak to you and a demon will speak to you? Anyways, so the Lord, the word of God begins to come to you. And then the Lord begins to say things like, haven't I told you? Have I failed? Do I change? See that now? Now, what's going on? The word of the Lord is coming to you. But then, he is telling you, the word of God that is coming to you is Logos. Because it's coming to reveal to you his character. He's reminding you of his character. He's reminding you, look, I am God. 
he can say to you, maybe you are, you are scared, maybe you are afraid. And then he comes and he says, who, who is he that will declare a thing and it will come to pass when I have not ordained it? Now, that's, that's something that is lifted from the scriptures, right? He had said it before. But then at this time, you were not reading the Bible. You are praying. And then that word just drops in your spirit. It is not your brain remembering a scripture. It is the Holy Spirit bringing his word to you. That's what's going on. So at that moment, the word of God is coming to you. I get what it could be any scripture. And sometimes God can be just, he can tell you things that you cannot even say, okay, I know where it is in the scriptures. Now, when he's doing that, you see, that's what Logos does. Logos will take you because God, God will not do a miracle until you change your position. Sometimes you, you know, say, oh, Father, look at what they have done to me. You feel if I cry hard enough, God's going to look at me and have pity on me. You don't know God. Does God have compassion? Yes, he does. But you see, the problem is this. There is nothing you're going to go through or you're going to face in your life that God has not already done something about. Now, I'm not saying us. I'm talking about you as his child, specifically. There is nothing. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. I, I got to this point in my life where, hey, that point you got to, there was the answer right there. Now, that's why I say God will not look at you and say, hey, yeah, see, this is my child. Let's go and help him or let's go and help her. No. So when he comes to you, he comes to you with logos first. Haven't I said to you, be strong? Get up and, and, and do you understand? Now, now, when he starts speaking to you like that, say, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then you to be smart. He is not going to be telling you logos if the matter has not finished. So observe the words that are coming to you. For example, you know, you, you, you're in that situation and then you begin to hear words like, have I ever failed before? Now, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm in a situation and I, I, I hear him say, have I ever failed you before? I remember a few years ago, you know, um, we, we needed some money. And so there was something that came up that like, oh, um, we, we, can, we can invest what we had and see how we can get some more money. And so I was playing with that idea, should I, should I, should I? So I went before the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you think? And then the Lord asked me a question. He said, what do you need the money for? This money that's, this thing you want to do now to make that profit, what do you need that money for? I said, no, this is what I need the money. And then I said, but haven't I told you about that thing that I'll handle it? I said, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, that's one thing you must learn. When Logos is coming to you, your response, oh, you came, she, I can't do that. Your response to Logos has to be repentance. Because he will not bring Logos to you if you have not missed it. We're talking about how walk, how you walk with God. You may be afraid. And then the Lord will come to you and say, Haven't I said to you, fear not? Now, how are you supposed to respond to that? Hey, hey, God said I should not fear. Oh, no, no, no. The reason He is telling you that is because you have sinned by letting fear into your heart. So how are you supposed to respond to that, Father? I'm so sorry I doubted you. Oh, Lord, I missed it this time. I repent. I'm sorry, Lord. I repent. Now, the moment you repent, then you are showing to him that you are ready. 
And repentance is not just standing there and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. For example, in that, that situation, you know, I had said to the person, I said, look, okay, you know what, let me, let me um, check out some things. I'll get back to you concerning that, if I'm doing it or not. And that's what got me to go pray and talk to the Lord about it. Now, that particular night, the Lord spoke to me. And the moment he said, but I have told you, I'll handle that situation. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I repent. I'm not doing it again. Now, I didn't go, okay, Lord, okay, okay, since you handled that one, um, there's another reason. I want. No, I understood that he didn't want me to do it. I said, all right. Called up the person. I said, no, I'm not doing it. And that's repentance. Because now, even though I have not done it, because sometimes you think, oh, uh, I didn't do it now, so what am I repenting for? The fact that my mind moved from trusting in him and I was now looking at how I'm going to mop up this and mop up that. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? The fact that my mind was contemplating that means I missed the mark. I missed where God was going. So that calls for repentance. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why? Because Logos had been, my eyes have been reminded of Logos. He has not changed in his character. It was me that changed my mind concerning his character. So I need to put my mind back to where it's supposed to be. So Lord, I'm sorry about that. Lord. I'm sorry. Because you see, when you repent, the next thing that follows is mercy. So we don't just repent so that we now feel pious, oh, I sinned, do, and I repented. No, the reason we repent is so that mercy can speak on our behalf. So you go, Father. When, whenever Logos comes to you, whenever the word of God comes to you and God is telling you about he, who he is, hey, I am God, I do not change. Who's threatening you? Now repentance will open the door of mercy. Then there are times Logos will come to you as a word of strong encouragement. Now there are times you're praying for something that the timing of that thing hasn't come yet. And there is nothing you're going to do to change the time. But what's going to happen is this. Whenever you pray, <laughs> the Spirit of God will come and begin to talk to you. And now that's where, for example, it will lead into prophecies and things. For example, Daniel. Now, all of Daniel's life, nothing changed. They were still in captivity. But anytime he prayed, God begins to open up the future to him. God begins to tell him things. Now, that's not Logos. You see that now? Now, that's bringing revelation knowledge to him so Daniel could understand the future he could understand what's what is coming but then the whole idea is for him to stay calm and patient with the Lord but nothing will change physically so understand if the timing of that thing hasn't come yet God will bring strong words of encouragement to you but when those words come, how you will know if the timing has come or the timing hasn't come is after that word of encouragement, if no rema comes. Now, what do I mean rema? If no clear instruction comes to you, then just relax because the timing of the, for the change of that thing hasn't come. Yet. But then you must continue in the place of prayer. That's what about the continuing prayer. Continuing prayer. Praise God. I wish I had more time. <laughs> but my time is up. But hey, listen. On the 1st of August, 
because because this month is going to end on Sunday on the first of August is mo on Monday we're going to be having our 24 hours um, fasting and prayer and that's what we call it but then we pray uh, we, we we fast the whole day and then we pray according to the watches the information is on your screen I want you to plan for this I want you to uh, I want you to um, the, the zoom link because the prayer is going to be via zoom I want you to get the link put a reminder on your phone or get something to remind you and join us on Monday but the prayer is going to start at 12 midnight on Sunday 12 midnight Sunday breaking into Monday we're going to start at 12 midnight and then we're going to pray at every watch God is going to do something great in your life, in your city, in your nation, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Plan for this. Any further inquiries, send us a message and we'll get back to you. I pray that the Spirit of God will carry you through this weekend. And I pray that God is going to open doors for you like you've never seen before. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Bye-bye. I'll see you on Monday.